back to the channel. It's so great to be here to bring you guys another recipe. I have been gone for a little while, but you know what? Thanks for sticking in there with me. You know, I said the last time that I made a video, I wanted to bring you some of my favorites, foods that I've just been enjoying, even recipes that I've made for quite a few years. And today I have one. It's my shrimp Creole recipe. Now, shrimp Creole can be made a few different ways, but this is the way that I love to prepare it for me and my family. I did ask a question on my community post, which recipe would you like to see? And this was one of them, and I got the most comments for this recipe. So I'm happy to bring it to you. If you're new around here, again, my name is Nancy, and I make recipes based on the WW program, or recipes just, you know, that I've been eating and enjoying for years. I'll bring you the points and the calories to those recipes. And again, today I have a really great one for you. Check it out. These ingredients are very easily to come by. It's a very simple recipe, just a few ingredients. The calories are wonderful. The points are great as well. You know, have you heard that WW is coming out with a new program? I am so interested to hear what that's all about. When they do, I'm sure we'll come back here and discuss it. <laughs> but for now, I hope that you enjoy my shrimp Creole recipe. It's actually a shrimp and sausage recipe. And you know, don't be afraid to use variations of this recipe. Again, it's really simple. Well, you ready to learn how it goes? Let's go. Okay, let's take a look at these ingredients. You're gonna need, of course, bell pepper, onion, and garlic. That's the start of any great recipe, in my opinion, for Creole cooking. You're also gonna need a can of diced petite stewed tomatoes. I have here the Hillshire Farm turkey kielbasa, and I also have tiger shrimp. We'll get into the quantities in a little bit. I am using bacon fat today. Yum, you know, that is also the base of many great recipes. I am using the Zatarans crawfish and shrimp crab boil along with bay leaves, black pepper, lari seasoned salt, the Tony Saturi's Creole seasoning, and garlic powder. Those are my ingredients to start. Let's get going in this preparation. So, the first thing I want to do is devein my tiger shrimp. So I am going to go ahead and separate the shrimp from the shell and I'm going to keep a bowl to the side for my shells. That's because I'm going to make my own seafood stock using that crab boil. So you don't have to take this step. Of course, you could buy seafood stock straight out of the grocery store. Uh, you could save your shrimp shells just like I have throughout the course of your week and you know when you need a seafood stock make it yourself so I'm adding about a tablespoon of table salt to my pot there goes my shrimp shells I used about six or seven ounces of a shrimp not quite a pound uh, so I'm going to add those shells to the water and now I'm going to add my zatarans crawfish and shrimp crab boil so i again will allow this to boil for a seafood stock so the base of this recipe you need to have a stock chicken stock works just as well as a seafood stock but i have the ingredients so i'm gonna make my own when you have the ingredients in your home and you could make something like a stock you are certainly saving on sodium levels, which can get you in trouble on a lot of the store-bought items. So, okay, there we go. We have our seafood stock. It creates a very rich stock, and you can, of course, freeze this and use it later. So I'm going to go ahead and let this cool and set it aside. I won't use all of this stock. We're only going to use a few cups, and I'll show you that as we get going. Okay, you know, just like in your gumbos, you're going to need some rice. So I'm not counting these calories, of course, in the recipe itself. You don't have to have rice on the side, but I certainly like it. So I'm going to go ahead and use my little rice cooker here and get some rice going. 
Again, you don't have to, but it really does work well in this recipe. Okay, let's get going on our veggies. So you're going to need, of course, a diced bell pepper. I'm using about a quarter cup of bell pepper, a quarter cup of a Spanish onion, and also about seven cloves of garlic. So, you know, you're the cook. If you don't like any of these ingredients as much as I do, you could omit or use less. But the more, you know, flavors that you have in something like a shrimp creole, the better. And so I'm just mincing my garlic and I'm going to, you know, kind of create a rough chop on my bell peppers and my onions. You know, this is kind of a low country recipe, so it doesn't have to be precise and perfect, you know, to save time. Just cut your veggies up nice and chunky, you know, not only does it look very rustic in your recipe again it just saves you time so our aromatics are really going to kick off this recipe and really give us a good base to start okay let's start working on that turkey kielbasa sausage so I have here a hill, the Hillshire Farm. I really love this turkey sausage. It gives you a good little depth of flavor. And I'm using about five and a half, six ounces of this turkey sausage. It's essentially roughly half of the package of the turkey sausage. And um, this is a serving for five. So if you have a bigger family, you might want to use more. Let's get our bacon fat into a skillet. This bacon fat will render down and melt down to two tablespoons roughly. So I'm adding that to my recipes, two tablespoons of a fat. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our onions and bell peppers and garlic and get those sauteed. And at the same time, we're gonna add our turkey sausage. You know, the bacon fat the little fat from the turkey sausage it really does season our skillet so we want to get those all together meshed up well get our recipe going okay let's start seasoning as well as we go along here i'm going to add of course my garlic powder i'm going to add my Tony Satchery's Creole seasoning. I'm going to add my black pepper, my Laurie's seasoned salt, and I'm going to reserve adding a bunch of white salt until we kind of taste our recipe and see where we are, you know, to ensure that it's not over salted. Of course, every chef says you have to taste along the way, especially in something like this where your liquids can, you know, kind of surprise you uh, in terms of how far um, salt will stretch when you're adding liquids to a, a recipe. So just kind of flavor and taste as you go along. But uh, again, we're adding our seasonings, sauteing those veggies along with the sausage. Believe me, you, my kitchen smells really, really good. You know, you don't want to brown your sausage. You just want to cook it through until your veggies kind of get translucent on you. So there we go. Again, you know, you could throw you some diced potatoes in this right here and have, <laughs> have a perfect little dinner just on your own for future reference. But we're going to keep going in our recipe. So let's go ahead and add a can of those stewed tomatoes. You know, I like using these petite stewed tomatoes because you don't have to run them through your, you know, your food processor. I used to get canned tomatoes and run them through my food processor so that the consistency could be more like a, you know, a tomato sauce. But um, this works just as well. And I actually kind of like the chunky bits of tomato in the recipe. Okay, let's get our stock going. So I've allowed that uh, crab boil, those shrimp shells, and the salt to come together. I have boiled it well, let it cool down just a little bit. 
and uh, I'm running it to a, through a strainer now so that I can go ahead and add it to our recipe. So you see what I mean? It just creates a very rich seafood stock. You know, you can keep this for later. Okay, I am using a ladle to add that stock to the canned tomatoes, the sausage, and the aromatics. And I would say that this is about a cup of stock that I'm adding here. Because it's such a concentrated, rich stock, a little goes a long way. All right, so let's give that a stir. Looking really good. You know, I've said this before in recipes, tomatoes can sometimes bother me. So I make certain to cook them down and to cook them out so that I can get rid of whatever properties are in the tomatoes, the acidity that really bothers me. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our bay leaf, just one. Cover our recipe, lower the temperature a little bit, and allow, again, those tomatoes to kind of cook out on us. Check your temperature. Make sure it's not too hot because you, of course, don't want your ingredients to boil over. And it's a, you know, it's an easy recipe. Take your time. Watch the temperature. You know, it could cook over the course of a good 40, 50 minutes. Okay, looks good. I'm going to go ahead and add my shrimp now. I probably cooked those tomatoes down a good 20 minutes. Uh, and now I'm going to add my shrimp. And of course, you don't want to overcook your shrimp because they get rubbery. So go ahead and add them towards the end of your recipe, not at the beginning, because it just, again, you won't like the texture of your shrimp. Okay, let's cover that again. Now, I have a few enhancements to this shrimp creole. You don't have to add these, but I do. And they just add a little special touch for me. I love a buttery kind of consistency to my Creole dishes. So I'm adding about a tablespoon and a half of I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. This just adds a little bit, again, of a buttery finish to the recipe. And I'm also adding a half of a fresh lemon. Because, of course, you're cooking with your seafood. And, you know, lemon is a great acidity to add to something like this recipe. So you don't have to add these steps, but it is, they're great little enhancements to this recipe. So again, we're going to let this cook a little bit. We just added those shrimp. So, you know, you don't want to cook it for too much longer, but you want to make sure all your flavors marry and mesh. It's looking really good. And believe me, it smells really good. Now, one of the things that I have added in the past to this recipe is gumbo filet or filet. But because we use that crab boil bag for our seafood stock, I didn't add it this time. But, you know, filet would be a wonderful addition to this recipe. Okay, here we go. I got my rice cooked. I got my bowl. Let's plate this up. This is one of my favorite recipes. And I know what you're thinking now. Hold up. Where did that corn come from? <laughs> I can't resist adding corn. And if I had okra, I would have added that as well. But I added a little bit of frozen corn in the end. You know, many of us do WW. Zero points for us. Why not get a few extra flavor into our Creole? So there we have it. Our turkey and shrimp creole so delicious it smells so yummy so easy i really do hope you give it a try the calories are great what did you think about that recipe easy right it's one of my favorites i have the leftovers in the fridge and i cannot wait to have them for lunch you know 
and probably for lunch I'll either eat really little rice or no rice at all and that keeps the calories and the points really low. It's actually kind of a dreary rainy day today so it'll be perfect for lunch. Well, if you enjoyed this recipe, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And that questionnaire on my community post is still there. If you want to see any of those other recipes I asked you about, please leave me a comment or leave me a comment below. Okay, until the next one. See you then. Bye.